jump in. Two high-profile mass shootings just days apart have President Biden demanding action from the group that refuses to quit unless a single thing gets in their way, Congress. My buddy Dianne Feinstein reintroduced her Senate weapon, assault weapons ban. I am asking you all to send that to my desk as quickly as you can. It's really needed badly. I'm sorry, but there's no way to pass a law that has the support of a majority of Americans. It's not a bill to spend a trillion dollars on untraceable military spending. And such a measure may be designed to help kids, but it could banish the kids of gun manufacturers to a dreaded life of a middle-class upbringing. For shame. Here to discuss is newly elected Democratic Congressman Maxwell Frost of Florida. Thank you for joining us, Congressman. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Sarah. Of course. Congressman, you rose to national prominence when you became the National Organizing Director for March for Our Lives, and now you're a Vice Chair of the House Gun Violence Prevention Task Force. Can you credibly represent all your constituents and not just the small sliver who don't want to be gunned down at a farmer's market? Well, I 100% can, Sarah, and I'll say it's not just the small sliver, right? Most of my constituents want action on gun violence prevention. That's why they elected me uh, with an overwhelming uh, majority. You know, this is one of the issues that I ran on is ensuring that we can live in a world where we all have the freedom to live without being gunned down at a restaurant, a grocery store, etc. The Constitution and its many amendments, including the second, are sacred and were never meant to be revised, altered, or amended. Let me say this, gun violence is a central part of the American fabric, and if we take it away, we'll have an identity crisis. I don't want America finding itself backpacking in Rome when I'm there. Very good point. Let's move on to the brutal killing of Tyree Nichols by members of the Memphis Police Department's so-called Scorpion Unit, because scorpions are known for their cool-headed, nuanced public service. Meet the press host Chuck Todd took a rare break from apologizing for existing to ask House Judiciary Chair Jim Jordan about policing, an unfamiliar topic since he's never called them even when abused wrestlers asked him to. What action do you, would you like to see Congress take? Well, I don't know that there's any law that can stop that evil that we saw. I don't know that any law, any training, any reform is going to change. You know, they, 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 this man was handcuffed. They continued to beat him. That's right. If cops do something bad, nothing can be done. If Hunter Biden takes a dick pic, we need to call in the Air Force. Now, Congressman Frost, is Congressman Jordan right that laws won't help, or is he simply going through his nihilistic nothing matters goth phase? He's going through that goth phase. I mean, look, and it's not just a phase. This has been his politics, right? We believe, right, we're an institution where we're passing laws because we believe they can affect the way that our country works. They can positively impact working families and all people in this country. I mean, imagine if uh, generations ago, when the civil rights movement was at its peak and people were fighting for justice, if people like Jim Jordan said, laws are not going to do anything, it's just human nature, there's just evil in the world. I wouldn't be on the show with y'all, and in fact, Dr. Bloom wouldn't be either. By labeling these acts as evil, Congressman Jordan is evoking the great mythic quests of Tolkien and Jules Verne, where when the brave heroes confront evil, they just sort of let evil do its thing. Now, Congressman, you're 26 years old and did not attend an elite boarding school with dictator's progeny. In other words, you're a know-nothing dunce, but we're here to help. It's time for some Inside the Hill private tutoring, Congress edition. We'll ask some questions to prepare you for the congressional journey ahead. We hope you don't find this condescending. It's supposed to be patronizing. You ready? Yes, I'm excited to learn. Great. Okay, first question. In the congressional commissary, you see a seat open next to a congressman. Do you A, ask if you can join them, or B, find another seat since they're obviously leaving space for their colostomy bag? C, grab my food and go back to my office and eat there. Good luck eating after seeing that bag. Next question. You're in the House of Representatives and hear an alarm. Does that mean A, it's time for a vote, or B, Lauren Boebert's Beretta set off the metal detector? Well, nowadays it could be either one. Uh, but usually the buzz on the clock means it's a vote. Now, next question. What is the most urgent health crisis? Is it A, millions without health insurance, 
or B, insurance companies refuse to pay for news anchor's third elective nose job? That's a hard one, but I'm gonna have to go with A. Wrong. Next question. You hear yelling in the halls of Congress. Is it A, two lawmakers debating raising the debt ceiling, or B, Matt Gates yelling at an airline operator that a teen's library card should count as ID? Uh, B's probably happened, but I'll go with A. Trick question, Spirit Airlines doesn't check ID. All right, last question. You're in a top secret briefing about an approaching megavirus. Do you A, call on the CDC to take action, or B, call your stockbroker and tell them to immediately buy stock in embalming chemicals? Well, because I own no stocks, <gasps> I'm gonna go with A. It's like an alien, like talking to an alien. You have so much to learn. And that's Inside the Hill Private Tutoring, Congress Edition.